We are going to discuss the application of uh, the so-called eigenvalue problems to structural dynamics and structural mechanics in general. Eigenvalue problem, eigenvalue problem is a problem in which the input data is a matrix, square matrix A of uh, size n, and uh, we are looking uh, to the solutions of the problem A times x, vector x equal to lambda x, being lambda and scalar value. Of course, a uh, trivial solution to this problem exists, is taking x equal to zero, but this is not an interesting solution, and we are looking for non-trivial solutions to that. And uh, this solution comes into a discrete number of uh, values of lambda, which are called eigenvalues, and a discrete number of vectors that we call vi, which are called the eigenvectors. The solution of this eigenvalue problem uh, is uh, able to, or allows us to characterize uh, the matrix A in a different way which is very relevant because it tells us how to, for instance, diagonalize this matrix. In particular, if you collect all the eigenvectors VI in a matrix, capital V, this matrix is a matrix that allows you to change the basis and to uh, reach a diagonal form of matrix A, which we call we can call lambda, which collects all the eigenvalues lambda in a diagonal. This is the expression you see there, and uh, this uh, eigenvalues V, if matrix A, the input matrix A is symmetric, which is often the case in engineering, uh, are orthogonal. So you have an orthogonal basis in which uh, your matrix diagonalizes, and this is a consequence of uh, the uh, solving the eigenvalue problem something you can do with, with its solution. Actually, this allows you to describe your matrix A in a very compact form, which is also very useful for some applications, which is what we call a spectral description of the matrix. You have here the expression in which A is uh, described as a sum of terms lambda i times vi times vi transpose. vi times vi transpose it's not a number, it's not a scalar product, it's a tensorial product, so you get set sum of matrices of uh, rank one. And uh, this is a very relevant way of expressing matrix A for different mathematical applications. We're going to see that uh, this is also allowing you to make a lot of engineering predictions as well. What we saw till now was the standard eigenvalue problems, but uh, there is a generalized eigenvalue problems as well in which you have two input matrices instead of A, you have K and M, which are two matrices, and you will leave the K in the left-hand side and M in the right-hand side. And, of course, uh, the, the statement of the problem is slightly different because you seek for uh, uh, solutions of the problem K times X equal to lambda MX, and, of course, you look for non-trivial solutions because, again, here, zero is a solution of this problem. And you have exactly the same type of uh, solutions of the eigenvalue problem consisting in a set of lambdas and a set of Vs. It's exactly the same and, actually, you can uh, very easily translate a generalized uh, eigenvalue problem into a standard eigenvalue problem and vice versa by First idea, having A equal to M minus 1 times K, which is not a very good idea because it breaks symmetry in the sense that if M and K are both symmetric, the A defined as M minus 1 times K is not symmetric anymore. But you can, using a small trick which is described in the bottom of the slide, uh, taking A as L minus 1 K L transpose, being L a factorization of matrix M, you can just uh, uh, retrieve uh, uh, an original standard uh, eigenvalue problem which keeps symmetry. So if K and M are symmetric, A, defined in that way, is symmetric as well. So the application of this type of problems uh, to uh, structural dynamics can be motivated by a very simple phenomenon, which is the phenomenon that describes the, the oscillation of a of an oscillator, of a simple oscillator. Simple oscillator consisting in a spring of a stiffness K and a matrix, uh, sorry, a mass of, uh, of uh, a solid of mass M. And the equation to solve is mass times acceleration equal to force. And the force is the 
recovery force, elastic recovery force, which is opposite to the, to the acceleration and the velocity, then the equation to be solved is m and second derivative of x being x the elongation with respect to time minus, equal to minus k the stiffness times x the elongation. So the solution of this problem is well known is x of t equal to some amplitude times uh, sinus and harmonic uh, time dependence which uh, uh, the harmonic time dependence includes a, a, a factor omega which is a uh, angular velocity and the period, so the inverse of the frequency, is 2 pi divided by omega, being omega such that omega squared is k over m. We can notice uh, here that uh, this omega, k over m, is actually, if we call it lambda, is uh, the only uh, value that provides a non-trivial solution of uh, a eigenvalue problem, which is a very simple one, with just, instead of matrices, numbers, k times x equal to lambda mx. In that case, of course, if you take lambda different than k over m, there is no solution, or only zero is the solution, only x equal to zero is the solution. But if you take lambda equal to k over m, every value of x is a solution. And in this very, say, simplified version of the eigenvalue problems, actually the only eigenvalue, which is non-trivial, is the one that coincides with omega square, which is the squared angular frequency of the system. So this is something that we're going to keep in mind in the generalization to uh, multipoint or uh, high-dimensional oscillators. This is not the only uh, one-dimensional oscillators, swing, or a pendulum is also an oscillator if you keep in the small uh, oscillations and then the model is linear. You have exactly the same equation as, as for the spring and, and, and uh, mass uh, system. And of course you get exactly the same solution. So you, have, you can have the same uh, ideas behind. But when you go to uh, large systems, complex systems in uh, structural dynamics, for instance a bridge. Bridge is a, you can see it as a continuum in which uh, what you are looking for is to characterize the displacement of every point in the bridge, in particular having a continuous function u that depends on x, y, z and t that characterizes the motion of each uh, point in the bridge. If you have that, the equation that uh, characterizes this solution is a PDE, a partial differential equation. I have here a, an expression of it, and this is a partial differential equation that characterizes this solution U. But in engineering, much typically, we are not able to solve analytically these type of solutions, and then we solve them numerically, and then in order to do that, we approximate function U, which is a continuing function, by a vector of normal value. So we represent the motion of the structure by a very large, several million, number of sampling points. And we describe the motion through this set of numbers, or a vector, that describe the displacement, x, y, and z displacements of every point. Still, we, we have the time dependence on it, so at the end, what we have is a vector that depends on time that characterizes the motion of the structure. The equation that uh, characterizes this vector u is a linear system of ODEs, of ordinary differential equations, which we can uh, state as m times u derived two times with respect to time, uh, u two dots, plus the stiffness matrix times u. So we have a mass matrix that characterizes the inertia of the system, and we have a stiffness matrix, k, that characterizes the stiffness of the system. So the recovery force that is created by opposition to the motion. This is the, the equation we want to solve, actually. Actually, the, the full equation would take care also of uh, phenomena like damping or uh, other uh, forcing, uh, uh, driving forces. But in order to characterize the free oscillation, as we did for the, for the simple 1D oscillator, we are going to uh, forget about damping and this uh, forcing term, and we are going to concentrate in the equation in which we have just 
the inertia on the step. So m times uh, u two dots uh, equal to minus k u being this time m and k matrix and u vectors. So this becomes an eigenvalue problem by doing an additional assumption, which is that the motion is harmonic. So the dependence on time is described by a sinus. If we do that, and we call x the amplitude, now it's a vector. The amplitude becomes a vector. It's not anymore a number. The, we have that u is going to be x times this sinus of omega t minus phi. This is exactly what we got before in the, in the time dependence. And of course, then uh, u to point, the second derivative of u with respect to time, is minus omega square x. So when you replace u and u dot into the first equation, you get exactly the eigenvalue problem. Because what you get is that your x has to be such that m times x equal to lambda kx, where lambda is exactly minus uh, 1 divided by omega square. Okay. This allows us to characterize uh, natural frequencies of the system. And the natural frequencies of the system play uh, an important role in a phenomenon which is very well known, which is called resonance. So typically, you have maybe already heard about resonance in a glass cup in which when a soprano sings with the right frequency, it may break the glass cup by exciting one of these uh, again, uh, frequencies, natural frequencies of the glass, when the excitation coincides with the natural frequency, a resonance phenomenon, phenomenon occurs, and then you get a collapse of the system. So this is very well known in, uh, in the system of a glass cup, but it's also pretty well known that it affects also structural mechanics. And probably one of the first example is this uh, bridge of the bas uh, Shen that collapsed in Angers in uh, 1850, 1850, in which uh, over this uh, bridge, a uh, group of uh, French soldiers were marching. And marching means that they were creating a very regular excitation over the bridge and they have the bad luck of uh, marching exactly of one of the natural frequencies of the bridge. So they got an excitation that coincided with the natural frequency of the bridge. So they got resonance and the bridge collapsed. So that was a disaster, a tragedy. Many soldiers uh, died. Uh, and uh, that was uh, very famous in, in the world at that time. And actually, it made all the military regulations uh, change and avoid or forbid uh, soldiers to march, to march over any bridge. Because there was this risk that uh, the structure, having its own uh, natural frequencies, could be excited by this uh, regular excitation. This was not only this was not the only a famous case in which uh, resonance uh, provoked the collapse of a bridge. Um, the well-known uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge uh, collapsed in 1947 by the excitation provided not by soldiers marching but by, by the wind. Uh, the wind across the along the river was creating some vortices uh, downstream, and uh, these vortices were detaching from the bridge at a frequency that were coinciding with which one of the natural frequencies of the bridge, excitating a torsional mode. And then the bridge, after some hours of uh, continuous uh, oscillation with very large amplitudes, collapse. Of course, that was a disaster again. Mm, thankfully, no. Uh, human uh, deaths associated with uh, this disaster, but uh, still a good example of uh, what uh, can happen if in the design of bridges you don't take into account the uh, dynamic properties of the bridge. Nowadays, any bridge can be easily modeled by a numerical model and Using the numerical model, you are able to uh, generate matrix 
K and matrix M, so stiffness and uh, mass matrices, and you are able to solve an eigenvalue problem. And from the eigenvalue problem, you can characterize not only the eigen uh, frequencies, so the natural frequency of, of the structure, but also the modes, so the deformation pattern associated to each of these uh, frequencies, which is very important because using this information, you can decide either if the bridge is an acceptable design or not, and if the case, in the case it does not, you can correct it. A more recent example was the Millennium Bridge in London that was created, the name comes with the date, uh, Millennium in 2000, was opened in, in 2000 and it had to be closed exactly the same day, day of the inauguration because people walking, again, people marching, were excitating one of the natural frequencies, which was of one Earth. One Earth is one strike per second, so that's a very standard way of walking. And uh, during the design phase, they didn't detect that this was uh, one of the natural frequencies. Of course, when people started to walk around the, the bridge, they had to close it because it was suffering, in this case, not torsional, but a lateral deformation pattern uh, oscillations. Uh, that was a pity because it is very simple from a, an engineering viewpoint to model this type of bridge and use a, a very simple numerical tool which uh, uh, solves this uh, Eigen uh, value problem and to find out that actually this one hertz uh, frequency was one of the uh, uh, natural frequencies of the bridge associated with uh, this type of uh, pattern of modal oscillation that could be just fixed after reinforcing increasing k or modifying k such that you take out the lambdas of the range of possible excitations. So that's a little bit the recipe that you can just follow in order to redesign the bridge after you know that something uh, goes uh, wrong. So as a summary of what we have uh, seen today, eigenvalue problems are a simple, well-known standard algebraic uh, tool that is extremely useful in the field of structural mechanics, in particular of structural dynamics. It can predict and give hints to correct the uh, dynamical response of uh, structures. We have seen three examples of bridges, but uh, you can uh, do the same with any type of, of uh, structure. They also play an important role in uh, different phenomena involving oscillations like uh, acoustics, electromagnetics, many others. And also, not in oscillations, but in the field of uh, structural mechanics, they play an important role in characterizing geometrical instabilities like buckling.